and now announce that we will begin member statements. And I'll recognize the member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. I seek unanimous consent to wear a Love Scarborough hoodie today in the chamber. The member for Scarborough Southwest is seeking the unanimous consent to wear a Scarborough T-shirt? Hoodie. Hoodie. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Guess we better. She already oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to recognize the entire team behind the film Scarborough and congratulate them for their immense success at the Canadian Screen Awards, winning eight awards earlier this weekend, including Best Feature Film and Best Motion, motion Picture, adopted from Catherine Hernandez's Adopted from Catherine Hernandez's novel with the same name, the film is a heartfelt and raw love letter to Scarborough, its resilience, and its people. Growing up in Scarborough and seeing my own family navigate similar struggles to those in the movie when my mother tried to make ends meet while raising my brother and I and while being a caregiver to my father. There was something so personal about watching our community's stories on the big screen speaker. Sasha Nakai, Rich Williamson, and Catherine Hernandez's amazing artistry made so many in our community with similar stories feel seen in an incredibly powerful way. The strength of our community, not just in my riding of Scarborough Southwest, but across Scarborough, li lies in how we have found support in one another despite decades of being forgotten by our governments and leaders. Because that's what Scarborough is about. You find ways. You find friends, resilience, and hope. This film told stories that are so similar to my own, and I'm sure many felt the same way who grew up in Scarborough. So I want to take this moment to thank the entire team behind the film and congratulate them for their immense success. It is a testament to the importance of investing in local creative projects, arts, and culture. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Next, we'll have the member for Scarborough Agent Court. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. The priorities and partnership funding, commonly known as PPF investment, is part of our government's COVID-19 equity supports, which funds various initiatives that help promote a positive and supportive school climate, support healthy relationships, and addressing bullying, cyberbullying, and trauma. I would like to extend my gratitude to the Minister of Education for initiating this program and making the health, safety, and well-being of the students a priority. Due to his efforts, parents engage in education, community family services of Ontario, the Chinese Cultural Association of Greater Toronto, Canadian Tamil Academy, Sarah Corning Center, and Zorian Institute received $50,000 grant each. I would like to commend outstanding work and the essential service the above-mentioned organizations provide to our families and the students. The PPF provides a much-needed culturally responsive mental health and community support to students during and after the pandemic. Supports provided to students may include short-term counseling via online platform, text or phone, one-on-one -on -one personalized lesson plans, and pairing students with professional mentors. Furthermore, students will celebrate and learn about our diverse communities, cultures, and traditions, in addition to the ramification of hate and racism in our society and try to eradicate them from our daily life. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Today I'd like to discuss an important issue to Niagara and the province, our craft alcohol industry. Many of you now, down in Niagara, we have some of the world's best wineries, craft ciders, and breweries. It creates an enormous economic impact for the entire province. 
The Ontario wine industry alone has a $4.4 billion economic impact on the province that results in creating 18,000 jobs. In Ontario, there are roughly 104 areas of production for craft cider, with 10 cideries in my riding alone. However, I think we need to do more to ensure this creates an environment in this province where they can grow. We need to come together and look at realistic policy solutions that could have a significant benefit to this growing industry that highlights some of the most beautiful farm products we grow in Niagara and Ontario. In terms of our wine industry, we must look at ending the basic tax with foreign wineries do not pay. Think about that. Foreign wineries do not pay. It would have significant impact on small and medium-sized wineries producing wines with 100% Ontario grapes. In the cider industry, I had the privilege of working with the members from both the Conservatives and the Liberal parties to introduce legislation which would bring more fair and realistic tax structure to craft cider producers in the province. Even these two small policy changes would have a significant impact on protecting 18,000 jobs in these industries. We grow and produce some of the amazing craft products in Niagara and Ontario. Let's work together and fight for these industries. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Muskoka Algonquin Healthcare provides top notch emergency and inpatient care with sites in Huntsville and Bracebridge. Last week, MAC announced they will also be offering, able to offer endovascular thrombectomy, EVT, screening to patients at both hospital sites. EVT is groundbreaking stroke treatment. If a patient is within four to 24 hours of stroke system onset, highly specialized teams can use a guide wire to remove the blood clot from the brain. This therapy has impressive outcomes and widens the window for intervention to 24 hours, where previous treatments using clot-busting drugs had to be initiated with just, within just a few hours of the start of symptoms. Teams at MAC work with partners like Central East Stroke Network to launch a new protocol that will offer timely EVT screening at both hospital sites. Eligible patients will be transferred to specialized facilities in the GTA to receive EVT treatment. Now when residents and visitors to Perry Sound, Muskoka recognize the signs of stroke and call 911, they will have access to this newest stroke treatment. I also want to take a moment to recognize Natalie Bubella, who recently retired as the president and CEO of Muskoka Algonquin Healthcare. Natalie managed the hospital for the past 10 years and expanded the services available at both sites. On behalf of the residents of Perry Sound, Muskoka, I want to thank Natalie for all her hard work and wish her well in her retirement. Finally, I want to welcome incoming president and CEO Cheryl Harrison, who will start next month. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell you there are few issues more pressing for the community that I represent than housing and the affordability crisis. Throughout my term as MPP, my team and I have worked to help tenants push back against illegal rent evictions and sudden above guideline increases. We hear from young families every day who haven't only seen their dream of owning a home shattered, they can't even find a place they can afford to rent. And as massive new developments go up in their neighborhoods, they already know that they won't be able to afford a place there. That's why this government's new housing bill was such a disappointment. It could have been a chance to correct years of failure on housing, but instead, it's one final gift to big developers that will leave ordinary people behind with nothing to help renters, no rent control, nothing to build the missing middle, nothing to build more affordable homes, nothing to curb speculation. Speaker, this government has had four years to protect tenants, build affordable homes that meet the needs of Ontarians, but at every single opportunity, they've shown whose side they're really on. This June, we're going to show, we're going to show them the door. Mr. Speaker, we're going to show them the door and we're going to elect an NDP government that will actually deliver homes that the people of this province and in my community can afford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for Orleans. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
March 22 is the, the day of uh, Francophone solidarity. Unfortunately, this is not taken seriously. We have been fighting for our rights because the, conser the Conservatives are still not considering them enough. In the past, they went through different battles and they had to fight the government because of it. In 25 years, our Francophone communities had to uh, one against the government, one against the government at the time, at the hospital of Ottawa. All of them united to contest the decision from the government. It's the leadership of the Francophone community that was able to save the Montfort Hospital. And here we are once again. The same conservative government is trying to kill the Francophone University by trying to, to credit Islamophobia. We're trying to work together to fight the government. It's the actual government who suppress the position of the Francophone commissioner. With Madame Simar, we were elected and we will continue to, held the co to hold the government responsible for the community, for the Francophone community of Ontario. I am proud to be a part of a party who continue to support our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Whitby. Well, thank you, Speaker. Our government is continuing to invest in the health and well-being of local seniors through the Seniors Active Living Centers. In this regard, Speaker, Whitby's Seniors Active Living Centers will be receiving $104,000 from the Ministry for Seniors and Accessibility. <coughs> Speaker, the Town of Whitby is part of the World Health Organization Global Network of Age-Friendly Cities and Communities. As an age-friendly community, they're committed to providing supportive physical and social environments for older people. And through their 55 plus recreational spaces, services and programs and resources, local seniors are able to live an active, safe and meaningful life while contributing in all areas of the great community of Whitby. Speaker, our government remains committed, absolutely committed to the safety, independence and well-being of Ontario seniors and continue to support the Seniors Active Living Center programs and services that offer so much to a growing seniors population here in Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Five years ago, the Me Too movement spread across the globe. This movement reached out, uh, reached our community, helping to strengthen survivors' voices so that they could courageously tell their stories. Local survivors reached out to the Sexual Assault Support Centre of Waterloo Region in record numbers. Their team responded by showing up for survivors in court, in hospital rooms, in police stations, and by holding space in their counselling office offices. Their waitlist grew as more survivors reached out. In response to this cultural shift, the government of the time increased the funding to community-based sexual assault centres across the province. In Waterloo Region, these funds would have secured two additional counsellors. But after the last provincial election, these promised funds were clawed back. And since that time, the shadow pandemic and has increased in gender-based violence during COVID-19 and has increased the demand even more, resulting in critical underfunding in the sector. The wait lists continue to grow. And last week I was in North Bay and I met with the ED of Amelia Rising. They have not seen an increase in operational funding since 1994, and at that time it was only $20,000. These agencies cannot stretch these dollars any further. Speaker, we should not have to fundraise in the province of Ontario to keep women and survivors of sexual assault safe. Will this government reverse the clawback to sexual assault centres so that every Ontarian has access to life-saving, changing uh, counselling in the province of Ontario? Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Oakville. Yeah, thank you very much, Speaker, and good morning. It's an honour to rise in the Legislature today to bring attention to the key of the Town of Oakville ceremony that occurred last week for saving the treasured Glen Abbey green space. On Monday, April 4th, I had the honour of hosting the Premier of Ontario, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, 
and the member from Oakville, North Burlington, in my riding, where we attended the Key to the Town ceremony alongside members of the Save Glen Abbey group and residents' associations. At this event, Mayor Rob Burton awarded a key to town leaders and volunteers from Save Glen Abbey, residents' associations, presidents, the Premier, the Minister, the member from Oakville, North Burlington, and myself. I want to congratulate the members of Save Glen Abbey their personal sacrifices they made to save this important green space for our community cannot be understated. Their hard work and organization is admirable, and the outcome is something we can be proud of. Saving this land was a grassroots movement. I want to thank the Mayor and Council for collaborating with the province to save this open space. I'd also like to thank my colleagues in government for listening to the residents of Oakville. Glen Abbey is an essential place for both the environment and local history and culture. Saving Glen Abbey is an example of residents, municipal council, and the province coming together and deliver results that benefit our local community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning.